So a little bit about uh, <coughs> about Corey. He's been uh, in the business for more than 17 years, both as a developer and an entrepreneur. He spent 11 of those year, years as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he spent four years as That's part of the OSS community, um, pretty much since Golang came out, and uh, is part of the Influx DB team. He also <coughs> leads the Denver Gophers meetup and mentors student, students in his spare time. But what uh, I found that was really interesting is he tells me that uh, he runs, uh, he's into explosives. Well, he owns a fireworks so store I, I and has sold that, right? fireworks to Alice in Chains, no less. So uh, there is at least, at least two interesting yeah. topics yeah. to discuss with him. So Go is one, the other is to how to blow stuff up. So, Corey, over to you. All right, so. I know it's been a long two days. This is uh, my first international trip ever. I've actually really never been out of the US. Uh, so this is uh, pretty cool. I've had a great time. It's been uh, amazing. I love the food. The food has been very good to me. I love it. Spicy. Great. Um, so you guys have probably had your brains melted by this point. There's been just a ton of great talks here. Uh, we've had a great lineup. And so hopefully you're still awake because I know it's been a long day. So uh, I was told I had 40 minutes to do the keynote. But I'm not going to do it that long, because that's a long time, OK? And I know we're already tired. So I'm going to try to get this done in about 20 minutes. Uh, and hopefully, I won't go too fast, everybody. So the Go community. So I believe that the adoption of Go is directly tied to the involvement of the local community. I've seen firsthand how groups can drive Go adoption inside schools and companies. But we need to get more people involved, and we need your help. So today, I'm going to show you what the community is doing. And I'm going to show you what you can do tomorrow to help us out. So a little bit about myself, <clears throat> my journey. Uh, as he said it earlier, I'm actually pretty new to open source. Uh, so I've been doing development for over 17 years. But open source is only about four years of that. And basically when Go came out, and I fell in love with Go. And so I started a Denver Gopher meetup uh, in December of 2012. So same year that it got released, 1.0. Our, our initial meetup had. 12 people RSVP'd, six of which actually showed up. So that was pretty good. I was pretty happy. It took over a year to break 20 people. And for a while, I was wondering, maybe I'm the only one that loves Go. <laughs> but I, I, I kept going. And then something actually magical happened. We had a GopherCon kickoff party. And this is an interesting story. Uh, it was going to happen in Denver, and we had a bunch of people coming internationally. And Satish actually had tweeted out and said, hey, is anybody doing anything the night before GopherCon? And I said, no. I said, but there's a bar where I work, so come hang out. And that basically went to about 500 people at the bar uh, before we were done. So it spiraled out of control, and it was fantastic. And that really started to energize the Go community in Denver. So we were pretty lucky. You know, not a lot of people had that opportunity, so we were lucky. Shortly after that, now that our Go meetup was on track and we started getting a lot of attendance, uh, I started a beginning Go track. I thought, you know what? Let's see how many people are interested in actually learning it. And the very first session I did was only two hours long. And it was nothing more than install Go, bring any computer you want. I don't care, right? Windows, Mac, whatever. And we're going to install Go. And we're going to write a very simple CLI program. That's all we're going to do. Almost 100 people RSVP'd. I was shocked. I'm like, OK, so beginning Go is important. So people were definitely catching on. From there, we started doing some Go lunches. And we would get as many as 30 or 40 people at Go lunches. Um, and that was fantastic, too. We were getting great sponsors and great attendance there. Um, so overall, you know, the Go meetups really took off in Denver. And I was pretty excited about that. Uh, I've since relocated to the Midwest. Uh, and I definitely miss Denver. But I miss community so much, I actually started a meetup in Chicago. <laughs> and they had a meetup, but I started another one anyway. So. Um, and that's actually going quite well. So that's kind of my background uh, on meetups and open source community. So let's actually talk about the state of the community right now uh, for Go. So these are very scientific numbers. I went out to meetup.com, and I got the numbers. And so what you can see here is that we're roughly about the eighth size community compared to like Ruby. This is according to meetup.com, right? So it's not highly accurate. But meetup.com is used pretty widely. 
And I'm actually not showing you this as a sign that we're not doing well, because that's not my point. I think community is actually growing really well, and I think we've got a lot of traction out there. What this is showing is that we're still young, and we have a lot of potential room to grow, right? We have a lot to be able to grow. So that's good. That's fantastic, okay? Uh, and let's talk about online community real quick. Uh, who here has used any of these online communities? Virtually everybody, right? And there's so many of them out there, right? If you, if you want to get involved online, it's pretty easy. But I really want to talk about a few that are pretty special to me. Um, so who uses the Gopher Slack channel? Okay, that's awesome. That's pretty good. Uh, the Gopher Slack channel is very active. If you went out there right now to general, you would see a conversation happening. 24 hours a day, there's conversation happening there. It's really great. We've got almost 5,000 members on the Gopher Slack. Got almost 300 channels. And the channels are diverse. I mean, there's channels for jobs. There's channels geographic by cities. Uh, there's channels by open source projects. So there's actually a lot of niches in there that if you really want specific information for Go in a very specific area, it's there. Um, and a side note, if you're not on this, if, I know you've probably maybe used a public Slack before. This is actually a, a full version. So there's history. Uh, so if you have a conversation that's going to be there, you can come back and search for it again. So that's pretty nice. We're pretty fortunate in the Go community to have a full version of Slack for us. Uh, a little bit newer is the Go Forum. Who uses the Go Forum? Yeah, see, that's not good. I've seen like four hands out there, five. Okay, come on, tell me, who uses it? All right, great, okay, at least a dozen. Wow, okay. Um, so this is relatively new. If you don't know, um, I would get out there and check it out. Uh, we've only got about 1,500 users right now. There's 2,300 posts. But here's the really important statistic that I found amazing when I looked it up. Average response time to a post on the Go Forums is 10 minutes. That's fantastic. So from 10 minutes from the time you ask a question, somebody might answer you, or they might ask for more information. But the point is, you're getting engagement pretty quickly. You're not waiting days. It's not like crickets out there. It's not silent. Um, so that's really important. Um, and it's also indexed by search engines. So all of these answers that you're asking, or questions you're asking, and, and answers that you're giving, they're getting indexed so people can search for them and find them. So that's really cool. So online communities matter, right? And we've got great coverage out there. I think we've got great participation. And there is some room to grow, but that's really not the problem. It's not the problem we have for communities right now. So let's talk about local communities, right? When we talk about local communities, we mean things like user groups, meetups, uh, conferences, hackathons, and training, right? So there's a lot of local opportunities. So I've kind of shown the online and offline opportunities out there that we're doing for a community. But the real question is, how can I help, right? How can each one of you help the community grow. Well, let's start with actually talking about two organizations that I think are pretty special out there. The first one's GoBridge. So who has heard of GoBridge? OK, a few of you. I'm going to ask who's participated in GoBridge, but I'm going to assume it's basically nobody because I only have saw about four hands. OK, I've got one person. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, <laughs> all right. And the next one's Women Who Go. All right, now I want to see a few more hands go up. So who has heard of Women Who Go? Everybody should have. Everybody should have been listening at the introduction, OK? All right, shame on you that didn't raise your hand. All right, so who's participated in a Women Who Go event? OK, good. So let's cover them a little more in depth. So what is GoBridge? GoBridge enables minorities in tech. It's volunteer-based. It's all open source material. And you can learn Go or learn to teach Go. Now, this is a really important point that I like to make to people. If you've ever wanted to learn how to teach a Go workshop, they'll help you learn. It's really cool. So if you've ever thought, you know what, I really want to teach one of these workshops, but I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done one of these, and I'm scared to death to get up there and just start teaching one. They're going to help you do that. So this is a great opportunity to get involved. It's really fun. And if you've ever taught anything, you know as well as I do that you learn as much as you teach. So it's a great way to learn. <coughs> It targets underrepresented communities. And I know that's kind of the same as saying you know, minorities, um, but I want to make it really clear. It's minorities, underrepresented communities. Um, that's what they're targeting. And there's also guidance for organizers. So if you want to organize a Go Bridge in your local area, they're going to help you do that. And it's really important. And they're looking for organizers. So um, it's really cool. All right. One second. I lost my voice when I came to India, so I'm not sure what happened. <coughs> So let's talk about GoBridge allies, right? So what's an ally? I get this question 
all the time. Now, I'm not part of GoBridge directly, but I want to see them succeed. It's a great cause. But I get the question all the time, like, I'm not a minority. Can I help? Yes, absolutely, you can help. They want you to help. They need your help. That's how we're going to solve this problem, right? We need everybody to get involved. If you're not part of the minority, if you're not part of the underrepresented group, that means you've got to get involved and help them, right? We, we need all the help we can get, okay? So you can be an organizer. You can be a teacher. You can be a teacher's assistant. You can be a host. You can be a sponsor, right? There's a lot of ways you can get involved and be an ally. <coughs> so where is Goldbridge right now? So right now they've got one scheduled coming up in San Francisco. And the next one they've got scheduled coming up is where? There's another one scheduled, okay? We need more help, okay? We need more organizers. So it, it, we definitely got to get going on this. All right, so what do they need? Let's cover that again. They need hosts, sponsors, teachers, teaching assistants. If you can fill just one of these roles, if you can just be the sponsor, reach out to them and let them know you're willing to sponsor. If you can be a host, reach out and say, hey, we'll be a host. So if you can find an organizer, we'll be the host. Just let them know. Let them be aware that you're in the area and you're willing to help. <coughs> that's a really big deal because that's the beginning of getting a local go bridge started in your area. One thing, you don't have to solve it all. So, women who go. A lot of chapters, and you should all know that we have one here, right? And there's one in Mexico, London, Boston, Boulder, New York City, San Diego, San Francisco. Women who go is, you know, relatively new. And look at how many chapters they have already. So this is fantastic. This is really good news. I like to see this. But we need more chapters, okay? And they need more help, too. And they need hosts, and they need sponsors, they need organizers. Okay, so these are two great organizations that you can get involved in. <coughs> Let's talk about local user groups. Okay, so who here goes to a local meetup already for Go? Okay, that's pretty good. Who actually runs a local meetup for Go here? We've got a couple, that's fantastic. Okay, for those of you that didn't raise your hand and there's a local meetup in your area, I want you to do one thing for me today. I want you to actually join it. I don't care if you ever have any intention of going. I want you to join it, okay? Because here's what that does. It tells the organizer, look at all these people in the area. There are a lot of Go developers here. This is fantastic. This is important to let them know that. Please join, even if you never go. And I'm hoping that if you join, you might actually be persuaded to show up at one of the meetups. You know, something interesting might come across your email one day and say, hey, that's pretty cool, I should go see that. But please, really, go join it. It's really important. But not everybody is fortunate enough to have a local Go meetup, right? So you need to go start one, right? So who doesn't have a local Go meetup? Raise your hand. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, so three of you got to go start one tomorrow, okay? That's not too bad. All right, well, let's talk about starting a meetup. For everybody that's going to watch this video that doesn't have a local meetup, uh, I actually want you just to go create one. And this is kind of a scary thing for people, but it's actually not very hard. So I just want you to go to meetup.com. I want you to create your local meetup. I want you to post a new meeting, okay? And I want you to post it without a date, without a location, without a host, and without a sponsor. It's kind of empty, right? It's kind of blank. It's what you need to start. <clears throat> and then you need to fill one piece at a time. You don't have to have all the answers when you start this. I have done this in several different cities, and this works. So this is a great formula. Just get out there and do it. People will actually show up and start to help you. They'll reach out to you, <clears throat> and they're going to help you. So this is my next part here, right? Who's going to support you? Your local community will. People love Go. They want to have a local meetup. And if, if you're willing to champion organizing the meetup, which is nothing more than scheduling a meetup to start with, they'll come help you. Other meetup organizers. So reach out to other cities and organizers and ask them, hey, what did you do to get your started? Hey, can you announce my meetup? Can you help me out? Can you retweet that I'm starting a meetup in this city? Reach out on the online community, go out to Slack, go out to the forums, post everybody, let them know that you're going to do this. And ask me, I'll help you, I promise. <clears throat> All right, <coughs> so helping online. This is what you can do for online. These are some easy low-hanging fruit, okay? You can ask some questions. And you're actually helping the community as much as you're helping yourself by asking a question. Because it's just creating interaction. It's creating more involvement. 
Uh, if you ask him on the forums, it's going to create more questions to be on the search index. So get out there and do that. Answer a question. Help these people out. We were all new at one point, right? Um, so please help them out. Uh, another one, which I want to see more of. I need to see more people blogging about their experience. I talk to people all the time, and they share these amazing experiences, some good, some horrible, right, about having experiences with Go and what they've done with their projects. And I ask them, well, did you blog about it? No, I don't have a blog. Well, I don't have a blog. Go to Medium. That's what Medium's for. Use it. Um, but blog about it. Really let people know. We need more people to blog their content. We need more experiences out there. And if you really want to, do a screencast. That screencast doesn't have to be a 30 minute or an hour screencast. It can be a minute long. It can be two minutes long. It can be, hey, I just learned this really quick little thing. And just put it out there and put it on YouTube, if nothing else. Get it going. Um, but again, the, the point here is really share your experience. Get it out online. <clears throat> Dave Cheney says, please, please, please blog. Okay? So Dave Cheney really wants you to blog. So what I want you to do is I want you to write the blog and then tweet at Dave Cheney that you wrote the blog. I want to have him get so tired of his Twitter account going off that he can't take it. So let's see if we make that happen. <coughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about supporters. Okay, <clears throat> there's some people who have done some great stuff out there in the community for us, and I imagine you're going to recognize these names right here. They, uh, Brian and Eric, started the original GopherCon in Denver, and it's just a couple of guys that really love Go, decided to do a conference, and they have never done a conference before, but they did, <clears throat> and it was amazing. And I asked them a while ago. I said, at what point did things take off for you. I mean, you did this really scary thing. You said, hey, let's do a conference. You made some crazy financial obligations to get this going. And they said, almost immediately. From the time they announced it and tickets were available, almost immediately they had support. So the community is really there to support them. And they did a great job. And uh, we, we really owe them a lot for getting us started. Sarah Adams founded Women Who Go. And I asked Sarah when she first got involved in the, open, like in the Go community, and she said it was really when her Go talk got accepted at GopherCon uh, about a year ago. And she said it really gave her a sense that people cared what she had to say. But then she realized it was kind of ridiculous. Like, people always cared what she had to say, right? Even before her GopherCon talk. And she kind of felt like she should have gotten involved sooner and got started sooner. And so when she really took action for the women who go, she was listening to a change log about GopherCon. And basically, Brian had said something to the effect that if people want to get involved in Go, in the Go community, we want you to, you know? Get going, we'll help you. And so she got involved. But again, this is you know no prior experience here. And she just started it. <coughs> GoBridge, you got Carlicia and Bill. <coughs> okay? They got this thing started. They had no prior experience either. And they went ahead and got involved and got going. So really important here to note that these were just ordinary people that were just willing to do it. And they got all the support they needed. Uh, and they need more support. But they're off to a great start, and it just took ordinary people, just like everybody sitting in this room right now. <clears throat> Let's also talk about corporate supporters. I think this is overlooked sometimes, especially um, running community. I know that this is really important, and, and I want to do a special shout out to some corporate supporters. First, I took this right off of the GopherCon India website. <clears throat> That's why we're here today. We're here because of these people. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these companies. Okay. And I wish I had the time and the resources to go and find every company that had their logo on every GopherCon in every country to date, because I would love to see that slide. Because I think that would really tell you we have a lot of supporting companies out there. <clears throat> but I also really want to know what people thought out there. So I asked everybody on Twitter one day, I said, hey, who's been supporting you out there? We got a lot of great answers back, you know? And so I'm just going to go through these real quick. I'm not going to read everyone off. I'll let you scan them. But you can see there's a lot of people that are being supported by these different companies. And it's not just through conferences. It's through the women who go. It's through GoBridge. It's through the meetups. They're all helping out in all these different ways beyond the conference. And that's just the list that came from the Twitter feed. And I know there's a lot more out there. And they're very appreciated. I mean, so if your company wasn't on any of these slides just now, or your company isn't actively involved in supporting the Go community, get them on the list, OK? And this can be something as simple as saying, hey, I'll give you five pizzas at your next meetup. That's it. 
Start there. But get involved. Believe me, we like pizza. You know, makes the meetup go wrong. So get involved. I want to issue a special thanks to Aerospike. They actually opened up their doors to us on Thursday for the training workshop. And that was a really big deal for us. And I just want to say a big thank you. That was a big deal for us. Um, and we need, we need more companies to do that and host for us, OK? All right, <clears throat> so what do we need? What do we really need? We need you. It's really that simple. We just need you to get involved. I talked about a lot of things already today. We just simply need you to get involved, OK? And I want to make something very clear. I hope I've demonstrated it. There's no prior experience required to get involved. You don't have to be some mad coding genius. You don't have to be popular on Twitter. You don't have to know anybody in your community. You just have to be willing to stand up and say, I love Go, and I want to go do this. And then reach out to people, and we'll get you started. So why are we actually doing this? Right? Like, why do we really want to get this community going? Let's, let's revisit that. Is it because we love Go? Well, yeah, sure, we love Go. It's not why we're doing it. Is it for job security? I don't think so. Based on my inbox, I'm not worried about job security right now knowing Go. It's a great time to know Go. Does it make you look good? A little internet fame? No, not really. It's all about the adoption of Go at work in education. I will be so happy when my son, who's seven years old, comes home one day and says, hey, Dad, I learned a program today. And I go, really? What would you learn? He goes, I learned Go. That's what I want to see. So we've got some time. He's only seven, right? But that's the language I want to see him learn when he's going through high school. So the, the adoption of Go starts with you and the local community. It starts right there. And I've shown you today all the amazing user groups that exist and all the experiences that everybody's having. And the Go community cannot wait for you to get involved and encourage you and support you. And we all love Go. And we want to see it become the choice in our schools and in our work. So join or start the meetup. Write the blog. Please make Dave Cheney happy. I'll never hear the end of it if you don't. Share the experience. Teach the class. But I just need you to get involved. So if you want help, ask me. I'll help you. Here's my information. Okay? Get a hold of me. I'll find somebody to help you. I'll help you. Whatever it takes. Question. Uh, no, I'm not, this question was, am I in a local explosives meetup? Uh, I am not. And I like, no, I, I, I think I'd rather not start one of those. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Since she's opened the floodgates, uh, let me also tell you that the reference uh, Corey made to Satish being in Denver and the GopherCon kickoff party was also the birth of GopherCon India. So, yeah. and it is it is just unfortunate that Satish couldn't uh, make it here because of uh, because of uh, things beyond his control. But uh, he's been alive on Twitter. He's been tweeting crazily about GopherCon <laughs> all through. In fact, he's even sent out an email that uh, 
from the looks of it, GopherCon has been a success. But if there is something which goes wrong, I am solely to blame. And I say, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so to add to that, Corey, there is nothing that ever goes wrong when you start something. You start a meetup, you don't find people, six people. We started a meetup earlier, we had one person, me. <laughs> and I'm like, screw it, we still keep doing it. But it works in the end. It does, you gotta, you gotta keep at it. But they will show up, just keep at it, don't give up. Cool, any more? Uh, so, you asked a question earlier, I wanted to follow that up to how many people have, uh, a meet, have are planning to start a meetup in your own city? All right, I just wanna know which cities y'all come from. Chennai? Nagpur? Oh wow, cool, that's pretty cool. From Pune, all right, Pune already has a go meetup. Brilliant, all right, so if y'all need a, if any meetup in India, if which city is that? Chennai, already we have a meetup going on, so you can join. We have about 120 golfers. There but you go. About four or five meet, <laughs> that's all. Okay, so if, just remember that if you all need any help for women who go or for meetup for any kind of things, there are companies around who will sponsor it. Contact us, we will also let you all know that. <laughs> all righty. All right, Cory, thank you so much for that inspirational speech. <laughs> really good. Ah, I love the stage. I love the stage. Did you miss me? I just had to say that, sorry. But, <laughs> all right, this is, it's uh, that time of the day when all of you are probably very tired and saying, all right, now we gotta go back and start writing some Go. Okay, so firstly, thank you all the sponsors for getting this done, for making this happen. Uh, we couldn't have done it without them. Are you here? Conference, especially related to Go, Ruby, and DevOps. Uh, we'd love to do more conferences, but the only thing we need, as Cody just mentioned, is we need people to get involved. So if y'all are interested in uh, getting involved in organizing any conference of any time, we will help you with budgets, sponsors, uh, logistics, our, uh, you know, our advice, we will have our hands over your head, all right? And our next will roll first, so don't worry about that, but get involved. Uh, y'all have been a fantastic audience, so please a loud round of applause for y'all. <laughs> Had it not been for the speakers here, we wouldn't have been here anyway. So speakers, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, our volunteers here, Setu, Bud, Abhinandan, Samir, come on up. Samir, come on up. I missed somebody. Suraj, Zichan, Guru, Please come up, don't make me call you because you guys know you were there to help out. Uh, quick word of thanks for these guys and adding that we did not ask them to help us. That's why they are called volunteers. <laughs> they stepped up themselves and said, hey, Gautam, what can we do? Tell us what to do, what do you want me to do? You want me to run around? I, I was, uh, we were frantic yesterday in the morning, the registration desk, helping out the AV, taking the questions. This is a mixed breed, by the way. This is not some to somebody we, we look at. We have, uh, I say to the co-founder of Josh, we have people who are working who, okay, through Gojek. All of them are either professionals or students or founders of companies. So it doesn't take anything to volunteer. I had a few people come and uh, talk to me yesterday, giving me uh, you know, points of review. You know what, Gautam, this could be better. Brilliant. We love some feedback from y'all. Positive, negative. If you think it should be made public, do positive or criticisms on Twitter to GopherCon India. We'd love to hear from you. If you think it will help us, send us an email at team at GopherCon India or tweet to us. We'll just look into it and we'll try and solve the problem. Uh, we've had a great time here and we want to make it here next year and we'll get bigger on this. So with that note, thank you so much ladies and gentlemen. 
look forward to meeting you all next year. Thanks a lot. I'll make you